Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? You've never faced, let alone killed, a vampire, Ichabod. You're a fraud. No, I'm not. I may embellish the truth concerning my achievements, but I'm totally dedicated to my quest. Stop fooling yourself. You've never faced a vampire before. You wouldn't stand a chance. Well, that's not true, sir. I've already faced one of these creatures. Oh, really? <laughs> And you're still alive. Well, we, we... We did not actually fight. I let it go. What do you mean? I entered the vampire's den. Oh, the stench was terrible. I was ready to kill it. But then I saw it. Just a suffering soul like you and me. I spared her. Tell me about the vampire you spared. It was... She was a girl. Her body was a mess. I could see pus running from the deep wound. She was crying in pain. You cared about her. That's what defines us as human, Ichabod. Yes, but she was a truly evil creature. I'm haunted by the tragedies she caused ever since I spared her. Do you need my medical attention, sir? Actually, I may. In my line of work, I have to stop at any sign of infection. Treating a vampire hunter's wounds is certainly a first for me. I'm happy to help you, of course. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Your support means a lot. I'm afraid your posters were destroyed. It cost me good money to print those posters. Such a pity people don't take the vampire menace seriously. Did you really think the posters would be useful? See the sad saint of the East End? How a single man can help so many people? I consider myself the discreet protector of these men and women. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. The wet boots shouldn't be fighting each other. They've got to figure out. It's locked, all right. It's one of the... <laughs> <laughs> This place looks like the picture I saw of the bomb site. Yes. The place has changed since the explosion, but it was definitely here. I should find some way to pay my respects. May all who suffered from this tragedy find or rest in peace. Good evening, Mr. Delaney. What? Ah, oh, you're a doctor. I found the location of the explosion, Mr. Delaney. I placed a flower for you where it happened, just as you asked. Really? 
That's, that's so kind. I never thought someone would... Well, thank you, Doctor. It's nothing, really. And I'm sorry for your loss. What? No, I, I didn't know them. No car was supposed to park there that day. Stupid bastard, why did he park there? You're the man who hid that bomb. I don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. I sense your guilt, Dyson. Why is that? Did you not think violence was an acceptable political tool? I still believe our fight was just... by killing an innocent couple who were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. No way. You made a mistake. A terrible mistake. Maybe an unforgivable one. But that does not mean that you are a monster. I swear I did not want to kill anyone. I did not hide in the shadow to kill on purpose. That's my only defense. I want you to remember the bomb, Dyson. Tell me about it. No. I don't... I don't want to remember it. Why use a bomb? What were you trying to destroy? The Dawson and Dawson Ammunitions Factory. A symbol of violence against the people. My group wanted to destroy it to send a message. The victims? They were not the target then. I spent so much time figuring out the perfect moment. I used a short fuse. No car had ever parked there. They all died. This is a slaughterhouse. From Seymour to my beloved mother Stella. Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. It's locked. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. I have retrieved the gift for your mother, sir. Great. Give it here then and take this for your trouble. I also found the corpses. The ones under which you left the necklace, Mr. Fishburn. Ah, so that's where I left it. I can be a bit stupid sometimes. Have you no remorse? You don't even deny your crimes. I have many weaknesses, Dr. Reed, but lying about who I am ain't one of them. You're not a mindless animal, Seymour. Surely you have something to say about these murders. Speak up and I will listen without judgment. Could be right, Dr. Reed. Maybe it'll do some good to confide in a gentleman like you. You being educated and all. Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? 
Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all? You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. That right. Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common, then. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight. Especially about my mum. This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum. I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm her son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her. But can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. Death is an appropriate punishment for your crime, Seymour Fishburne. Cherish every day that you spend as a free man. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose. But she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot round my neck. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Do you need help, sir? I think I'm fine. But what happened to my jailer? Be careful. He's as vicious as he is strong. You don't have to worry about him anymore. What happened here? I am Tadao Kimura. I was imprisoned by this lunatic for several days. I thought I was going to die here. You're not going to die now, Mr. Kimura. If you hurry, you should be able to get home safely. It seems that I owe you my life. You have all my gratitude, Dr. Reed, since it is the most precious thing I possess. 
Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care. Miss Teasdale, are you all right? How do you know my name? Who are you? My name is Dr. Reed. I managed to track you down thanks to your father. So my father really was looking after me. This man, this vampire told me my father was dead. Is it true? I'm afraid so, miss. I'm so sorry for your loss. But you are free to go, as your abductor is no more. I suppose my jailer also killed my father, didn't he? Thankfully, he did not search your father's corpse, where I found his notes describing where he might find you. You should read them. I must find my father's body. He deserves a proper burial. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful. Until we meet again. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, 
She got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. Hello, Venus. Hello, Jonathan. Please, come in. I'm so sorry for your loss, Jonathan. No invitation is needed to enter this building. That can't be a good sign. No sign of a struggle. It seems Charlotte's friend knew the killer and let him in. Something must have gone wrong. Someone is responsible for this mess. But who? Blood. I should follow the trail. Who are you? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. I'm the Marquis de bois Colombe, and I strongly invite you to find your own game, sir. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm here to solve the mystery concerning the death of a young woman killed by a vampire. A young woman killed by a vampire? Oh, <laughs> you're joking, right? Oh, I do love the British sense of humor. And who exactly are you? I am Jacques-Michel Guillaume Florimond, the Marquis de Bois-Colombe, at your service, my dear cousin. You're French, but your English is quite good. I was born in France, sir, but I consider myself a traveler of this world. Mm, so many countries, so many tantalizing tastes. Dear cousin, are we related? We could be of the same blood, my dear. I tend to consider all Econs as family, don't you? What are you doing here? I recently decided to visit London. I've always dreamed of visiting a city on the verge of collapse. Such a delicate, yet intense spectacle. You take pleasure from others' misery. I have been a totally depraved and immoral creature since the day I was reborn, sir. And probably before. What do you plan to do here? Take pleasure. Take pictures. Enjoy the show. Have fun. Believe me, I won't be the only foreign immortal who bought a ticket to the fair. I followed the trail of blood from her room to here. Oh, you're referring to that young woman. Yes, the meeting turned messy. I'm afraid I ruined my last wedding good. So you admit you murdered her? I admit nothing, my good sir. 
I only regret the blood of that girl staining my clothes. Oh, blood can be so messy. What happened? She wanted to become one of us. Not the first time I have received such a proposal, but uh, I must admit her direct approach tempted me. And then what? The body rejected my blood. It happens, you know, sometimes even with voluntary prey. At least her gurglings brought me some fun, until the artery burst. Your cruelty deserves punishment, sir. And what else is new? Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I have found out what happened to your friend, Emily. I can handle the truth. There's no need to hide the bloody details. Your friend was planning to become a vampire. She thought she'd met an honest one and made a deal with him. Unfortunately, Emily did not survive the process. My mother told me many times about the risks of being turned and suspected she exaggerated the danger to avoid me being tempted. No, the risk is real. Have you any idea what a body has to endure to become an organism entirely consumed by its need to process and recombine blood? I should never have talked to Emily about vampires. I never thought she'd actually try it without me. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Here, take this for your discretion. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see... It's locked. It's locked. Mr. Connor's injuries don't match the report. I'd better look into this. The chest was originally opened to perform the operation. The sutures are clean, but the chest has been reopened. Traces of a pinkish foam at the corner of the lips. Some sort of drug overdose, perhaps? Multiple abrasions and scarring on the arms and legs. Old and distinctive injuries of a sailor or a fisherman. A puncture over the left lung. Possibly a chest tube insertion. Not the cleanest work, but I think it was successful. 
signs of internal bleeding. So, Dr. Tippett's anesthetics were incorrectly dosed, causing the patient's death. And then he tried to operate on him again. Tippett has made an egregious error. It's time we talked.